Yoko's Paper Cranes by Rosemary Wells. When Yoko was very small, she and her grandmother, Obasan, fed the cranes in the pond at the end of the garden. The cranes stay in our garden only a few months, said Obasan to Yoko. Then they fly away from Japan. Don't go said Yoko. The cranes come back every year, said Obasan. Yoko's grandfather, Oji-san, taught her to fold paper into cranes. Oji-san made cranes, frogs, and lots of other animals out of his colored papers. When Yoko was a big girl, she and her mama and papa sailed far away from Japan, but Yoko never forgot Obasan and Oji-san. Every week, a letter came to Yoko and her family in America. Every week, a letter went back to Obasan and Oji-san in Japan. Obasan's birthday was in winter. Yoko had no money to buy a birthday present. Yoko knew that thousands of miles away in Japan, Obasan's garden was cold and snowy. Obasan was waiting for the cranes to come back to her garden pond. Yoko asked her mother for beautiful paper. She folded the paper into a crane just as Oji-san had shown her. She made three cranes of different colors. Then she put them in a package and put stamps on the package. The mailman took it and sent it in an airplane across the sea. All night that airplane flew from warm California to wintry Japan. Another mailman left the package at Obasan's door. Obasan opened the package. She and Oji-san hung Yoko's cranes in the kitchen window. Obasan opened Yoko's birthday card. It was written in Japanese. Soon I will come back to Japan just like the cranes is what the card said. The paper cranes turned on their strings. Happy birthday from Yoko tingled in the air around the cranes. Obasan sipped her green tea while the snow fell outside the window. I love the beautiful illustrations in Yoko's paper cranes. The art of origami brings Yoko and her grandparents together long after she's moved away from Japan. Let's try it together. Let's make an origami flower. To start, first take your sheet of origami paper, which is a perfect square, and fold it in half, lining the corners up to create a triangle. Each time you make a fold, remember to crease it down with your fingernail. This will strengthen your fold and give you a guide to use in the next steps. Open the paper up again you should see a guideline that you've created going across the center of your paper. Let's create another guideline. Rotate the paper and match the corners just like we did before, pressing down to create that triangle shape again. When you open up the paper again, you should see two lines crossing perpendicular to each other in the center of the paper. The lines create four triangle shapes inside of our square. The area of each triangle is equal to one quarter the area of the entire square. Let's start creating the petals for our flower. First, we'll fold each corner over to the very center of the paper where the two guidelines cross. Try to make the corner end in the exact center point of the paper. Do the same for each of the remaining corners so that they all meet exactly in the center. They should not be overlapping, just touching. 
Take your time while you fold to make the folds nice and even. Remember the four large triangles that we created while we made our guidelines? Each fold we've just made divides one of those triangles in half. After this first round of folding, we've created a smaller square. The area of the square is one half the area of the big square we started with. Let's do the next round of folds. Take each corner of the smaller square and just like in the last step, fold the corners into the exact center of the paper. Use your guidelines to help you and be sure to crease down each fold really well. Each time you make a fold, it reduces the total area of the paper. The square we have now is one quarter the area of the large square we started with. Let's create the next layer of petals. Fold each corner into the center point again. In this round of folds, you'll notice the paper is thicker and harder to crease. If you start to notice that your folds are getting a little uneven, don't worry, just keep going. It will still look great. Now our square is one eighth the size of the original square. See how after each round of folds, we still end up with two lines crossing at the center. The paper is really thick now, so let's try and squeeze in one last round of folds. Again, fold the corners into the center. Don't worry if they come unfolded a little bit, that's okay. During each round of folding, we added a new layer of thickness to our shape. The folds are so thick now that you probably won't be able to crease them. That's okay, because we're almost done folding. Now our square is tiny, just 1 16th the size of the original square. We're ready for the last step. First, open up the outer layer of petals. Then pull back the next layer, not all the way, just enough so that they stand out. Use your finger to push back the next layer of petals. You just want to open them up a little bit so that you can see the petals underneath. For the innermost layer of petals, carefully curve the tip of the point up just slightly. Now the origami flower is finished. Remember how during each fold our triangles got smaller and smaller? The triangles we ended with were so much tinier than the triangles that we started with. If you open up your flower all the way, you can see how many of the tiny triangles make up one large triangle and how many of the tiny triangles make up the entire square. You can try counting them. Have fun making lots of origami flowers. You can give them to a friend or decorate your house to celebrate spring. 
For more information about receiving STEAM kits in the mail, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.